Good morning. Today we're going to quickly review about the things that we already learned yesterday. Um, so what have we learned about the word habitat? Habitat is a place that has food, water, and shelter for animals and plants that live there. What did we learn about the Arctic tundra and the Arctic Ocean and their habitat? We learned that the weather and the temperature of the Arctic tundra and the Arctic Ocean is very cold in the winter, colder than most other places on Earth, even during summer, and often windy so that it feels even colder. What did we learn about the word adapt? Remember that many of the adaptations made by the animals living in both the Arctic tundra and the Arctic Ocean are changes that have come about to help the animals stay warm when it gets very cold, like their thick fur, having blubber, which is that layer of fat under their skin, and etc. Here you're looking at the picture and what it looks like in the Arctic tundra, and I'm going to show you the habitat we're going to learn about today is the desert. So this is a picture of a desert. Can you describe what you see in the picture? and how it looks different from the pictures that you saw from the Arctic. The temperatures found in a desert is almost exactly opposite of that found in the Arctic. The Arctic is very cold, whereas the deserts, they're usually very hot. The Arctic is wet and muddy in the summer, whereas the desert is very dry and sandy. Do you think the same animals that live in the Arctic live in the desert? Why or why not? How do you think the animals that live in the desert might be different from the animals that live in the Arctic? Deserts are located in many different regions of the world, but today we're going to hear about a particular desert that is located in the northwestern part of Mexico and the southwestern part of the United States, in parts of the states of Arizona and California. This particular desert that's located here is called the Sonoran Desert. Today, I want you to really listen to find out more about the Sonoran Desert and how animals have adapted to living here. Here comes our friend Rattenboro in the desert. After nearly and almost becoming a polar bear snack in the Arctic, I thought we should go someplace where my whiskers and tail could thaw out and warm up. So I've brought you to the desert. There are many deserts all over the world. You know you're in a desert when it doesn't rain very much. Many deserts can also be very hot. Because it's so hot and dry, only certain types of plants and animals can live there. Welcome to the Sonoran Desert in the southwestern part of the United States and the northwestern part of Mexico. The temperature is quite hot during the day and it doesn't rain very much. The heat and lack of rain make it hard for some plants and animals to live in the desert. They must all be specially adapted to live in the hot weather and survive with very little rain. How do they do it? Some plants can save and store water inside their plant parts when it does rain. Other plants grow only in shady areas near mountains or rocks. Because there are very few plants that can be used as shelter, the animals that have adapted to living in a desert often seek shelter underground and make their homes under the sand. Living underground helps them stay cool when it gets really hot and it keeps them hidden from other animals that may want to eat them for lunch. Ouch! What did I walk into? Aha! Uh -huh. Here is one plant that lives in the Sonoran Desert. The Saburo cactus is the world's largest cactus. Cacti don't have leaves. They have prickly spines instead, which is exactly why it hurts so much to touch this one. The incredible Sawuro lives for up to 200 years, and in that time can grow as high as a house and can weigh as much as several cars. The most amazing thing about the Sawuro is that it is a habitat in itself. That's right. Not only does it manage to live and thrive in the desert habitat, but just by being there, it provides food, water, and shelter to many different animals. Let me get my climbing gear out and some gloves to protect me from these sharp spines, and I'll meet you at the top. You already know that it hardly ever rains in the desert, but when it does, 
The saguro cactus saves and stores huge quantities of water in its roots and stems. The cactus saves the extra water and uses it to survive during those times when it is very dry and does not rain. In the spring, white flowers grow on the saguro. At night, when the desert cools down, these flowers open to show sweet nectar, which butterflies, bats, and birds feed on before the flowers close the next day when it once again becomes very hot. In the summer, red fruits begins to grow on the saguro. Many animals eat the fruit of the cactus. Here is an interesting bird called a Gila woodpecker. The Gila pecks holes into the soft cactus with its beak to make a nest for its eggs. The Gila woodpecker is an omnivore. An omnivore is an animal that eats plants as well as other animals. Gila's feed on cactus fruit and berries as well as insects that have invaded the saguro. Thankfully, I brought a sandwich so I won't have to join these Gila's for a buggy lunch. It really is way too hot for a regular rat like me to live here. I'm glad I brought my fan with me. Interestingly enough, birds like this Gila woodpecker can live in the desert habitat because their feathers help protect them from the hot desert sun by trapping cool air next to their skin. Still, most birds only go out to feed in the early morning or evening when it's cooler outside. From noon to late afternoon, many of these birds seek shelter in the holes that they have dug in a cactus or in other shady places. Here's another bird that makes its home in a saguro cactus, the elf owl. The elf owl, the world's smallest owl, is only five inches long. That's just a bit bigger than one of your hands. It moves into nests that have been abandoned by the Gila woodpeckers. The elf owl, like most owls, is nocturnal, which means that it rests during the day and wakes at night to hunt for food. The elf owl is also a carnivore. A carnivore is an animal that eats only other animals, no plants. It uses its large eyes to hunt in the dark night for bugs that live in the desert. Most owls eat mice and, I'm sad to say, rats. But I think I'm safe from the elf owl because I'm bigger than it is. Oh look, here comes a desert cottontail rabbit, another animal that lives in the Sonoran Desert. The desert cottontail looks a little like the arctic hare we saw in the tundra, but it has large ears and longer back legs. Desert cottontail rabbits are herbivores. Herbivores are animals that eat only plants, no animals. The desert cottontail eats grass and even cacti. Smaller animals like the desert cottontail always need to watch out for larger animals in the desert that might eat them. Many animals and plants are part of a cycle called the food chain. Coyotes, for instance, like to eat rabbits. In fact, there's a coyote coming this way, so let's stay up here and watch it. Coyotes are found all over the United States, including the Sonoran Desert. As you can see, the coyote has a light, tan-colored coat to help reflect the sun's rays and to camouflage it. Coyotes are carnivores like the elf owls. Coyotes have very good senses of smell, hearing, and vision, and they can run very fast, which means they are excellent hunters. They are also scavengers. Scavengers are animals that eat meat and waste left by other animals. Coyotes live in dens, which they make by burrowing into the ground. I think this one has smelled something because he's just run off. Now I'm getting down from this cactus before another coyote comes along to make me its dinner. It seems like rats are on the menu everywhere I go. The end.